Thanks for tuning in with us at Dream City Church Omaha. For further information, including past sermons, visit us online at dreamcityomaha.church. We hope you enjoy the message and that it has a positive impact on your life. Amen. Well, good morning, everybody. It's all right. You can clap for the buzz. How's everybody doing today? Everybody excited to be in the house of the Lord this morning? Amen. Amen. Just again, want to say welcome to uh, to all of our guests today. My name is John Weasel. Me and my wife, Angel, have the honor and the privilege to serve this house as lead pastors, and uh, and we love you guys so much. Thank you again for uh, for getting up early and, uh, and joining us uh, at the early service. It's not quite a sunrise service, but it's close. <laughs> but, it, but it's close. I think next year we might... Uh, we might just have to do a sunrise service. I won't preach that. I'll let Dad go ahead and preach that one. But it's good to it's good to see everybody this morning. Next week we're gonna we're gonna start a new series, and so just to kind of give you a, a heads up where we're going and, and what we're doing next week, we're starting a new series entitled Six Words That Will Change Your Life." Six words that will change your life, and and it's not six words put together. And so for those of you that are thinking, what are those? What are those six words? What is that combination of words that's going to change my life? It's six individual words. That if we can take these words and, and apply them correctly to our lives, there is life-changing impact that happens when we apply them in the right way. And so just want to invite you back and, and make sure to go out and invite your family, invite your friends. We're starting that next week. It's going to be uh, fantastic. But this morning is Resurrection Sunday. How many of you are excited about that? How many of you are thankful for Resurrection Sunday? This morning we're going to get into God's Word and see what is so special about Resurrection Sunday and what is our responsibility in light of that. And so if you have your Bibles, Luke chapter 24 is where we're going to be this morning. And I'm going to be reading from the New Living Translation. And so if if your Bible reads a little bit differently, that's why. If you don't have a Bible, the verse will be up on the screens for you. But Beginning in verse 1, this is what the Bible says. It says that very early on Sunday morning, must have been the 8 o'clock service, the women went to the tomb taking the spices that they had prepared. They found that the stone had been rolled away from the entrance, and so they went in. Now, I don't think these ladies get enough credit for this action. Like, here you are at a graveyard, very early in the morning, and there is an empty tomb. And their first thought is, let's go inside. I don't know about you, but that would not be, that would not be my first thought. That would not be my knee-jerk reaction. Hey, let's go check this out. Like, I've seen enough scary movies. I know that that's how you die. When you go to investigate the strange noise, something bad happens. But nevertheless, these women went in. But they didn't find the body of the Lord Jesus. And as they stood there puzzled, two men suddenly appeared to them clothed in dazzling robes. The women were terrified and bowed with their faces to the ground. And then the men asked, why are you looking among the dead for someone who is alive? He isn't here. He's risen from the dead. Remember what he told you back in Galilee. You remember that the Son of Man must be betrayed into the hands of sinful men and be crucified, and that he would rise again on the third day. He would rise again on the third day. Are you thankful that this morning that tomb is empty? Amen. Let's pray for our time together this morning. God, we thank you and we love you. Jesus, we thank you. We thank you this weekend for the crucifixion. We thank you for Friday. We thank you that that you hung between heaven and earth for six hours and suffered on our behalf. God, we thank you the price that you paid. And God, we thank you for Sunday. We thank you that it didn't end with the crucifixion. It didn't end when you were put in that tomb. But on that third day, the, the stone was rolled away. And because you live, God, we can live. I thank you. 
for, for what Easter means. Not that it's just another day. There, there, there is special meaning today. And God, as we examine your word to find what does it mean for us and what do we do in response to it, I pray that you would speak clearly to each and every one of us, that we would walk out of this place different than when we came in, knowing that we had encountered you. We thank you. We love you this morning. And everybody said amen. Amen. How many of you guys know what these are? Dominoes. Might be a little bit hard to see in the back, but, but these, are, these are dominoes. How many of you guys have ever played dominoes? How many of you guys know how to play dominoes? Right, like it, it's, a, it's a fairly simple concept. There's, there's a tile with number, a number of dots on either side. And, and one way to play is that you have to connect a tile with a certain number to a tile that's already been played with the same number. And, and that's one way to play. But if, if you're like me, you know that the real way to play dominoes It was something like this, right? I remember as a kid going over to my grandma's house, and, and my grandma was always playing games. And, and she would play, she would play categories, which we've got, we've got some fun family memories of uh, of sitting around the table playing categories and things that were written down that shouldn't have been written down as an eight year old. But don't hold that against me. And we, we would play phase 10, and, and I remember there were times where we would go over and Grandma was, was playing domino. She always, she always had a game, and I would sit there as a kid, and, and, and I would want to play, not really knowing how to play. And so if, if you've ever sat at a table of dominoes, even if you're playing the way you should play, you can't help but start setting up your dominoes like this, right? In fact, we, we, we set up chains of dominoes only to then what? knock them down. And we, we, we see how far we can go and how, how long we can make it before we go back to the beginning and cause this chain reaction to happen. It's, it's known as the domino effect, that there is one event that sparks a series of subsequent events that leads us to wherever we are today. And this morning, as we, as we think about the resurrection, this morning, as we think about the life that Jesus lived, as we think about all the things that Jesus did, I want us to think of them as a domino effect. I want us to think of them in terms of God looking down on his creation and deciding to, to set up all of, these, all of these, these events that in and of themselves might have might have been okay, might have been somewhat meaningful, but when you put them all together, it begins to paint the picture of the gospel, and it begins to paint this picture of his love for us. I, I, I look at the life that Jesus lived, and yes, he came and he was, he was born at, at Christmas, and we celebrate that every year. He was born to a virgin, and, and he lived this perfect life, and he was baptized by John the Baptist and entered into ministry and went 40 days into the desert and fasted and was tempted by the enemy, and yet he repelled his temptation by, by the word of God and who he was inside. And, and we look at the miracles, and we look at the life lived, but it even goes back before that. See, the, the dominoes didn't, didn't begin being set up when Jesus was born. They were, they were set up long before that. From the very beginning of time, even from when God said, let there be light, he was setting up this chain reaction. He was setting up these events that would lead us to where we are today. In the Old Testament, there are, there are prophecies about the Messiah. The Messiah was the one who was going to come and, and save us. He was, the, he was the coming Savior that everybody was waiting for and everybody was looking for. There's, there's prophecies throughout the New Testament, and, and mathematicians have looked at how many prophecies Jesus has fulfilled and the odds of one man fulfilling any number of these prophecies. In fact, they, they said that the odds of one man fulfilling eight of these prophecies is one in 10 to the 17th power. In case you have problems thinking mathematically, what is the 17th power? It is a one with 17 zeros behind it. This is the odds. These are the odds of Jesus, of one man fulfilling eight prophecies about the coming 
Messiah. You know how many prophecies there were in the Old Testament? 300. There are 300 unique references to prophecies about the coming Messiah. This is the odds of of Jesus fulfilling eight of them. They said, well, what if he fulfilled 48? Let's say, let's say, what are the odds of one man fulfilling 48 prophecies? It's this number. One in, this is 10 to the 157th power. So if you want to, to take your time counting the zeros, you can, but I'll tell you there's 157 because I typed each and every one of them. This is the odds of Jesus, of one man fulfilling 48 prophecies. He didn't stop at 48, he fulfilled all 300. Jesus Christ fulfilled every prophecy in the Old Testament about the coming Messiah, that he would be born in Bethlehem, that he would be born of a virgin, that, that he would live this life, that he would, be, he would die this way, that, that as he died, he wouldn't speak, he would be silent. And the scripture backs that up in the New Testament. It tells us that that's how Jesus died, that his bones wouldn't be broken. They didn't break any of his bones when they, when they crucified him. All of these prophecies that point to one man and that one man is Jesus. What is he doing? He's setting up dominoes. He's looking down at history and he's, he's establishing an order of events that, that is going to lead us to today. And in this weekend, we celebrate two of the biggest events in his life. We, we celebrate two of the biggest dominoes in this whole plan. We, we celebrate the crucifixion. We remember the price that Jesus paid on Friday night. And the reason we remember it and the reason why the crucifixion is so important and it's so great to us is that because of the crucifixion, here's the truth. Because of the the crucifixion, our sins are forgiven. Because of the price that Jesus paid, we are no longer under the weight of our sin. We We are no longer due to pay the debt that we owe. The Bible says that the wages of your sin and the wages of my sin is death. Each and every one of us deserve death. That's that's what we owe because of the sins that we've committed. But because Jesus died, because he hung on that cross, because Friday morning he, he he was found guilty, he carried his cross up that hill and for six hours he hung between heaven and earth and he gave up his last breath because he was beaten, because he was scourged, because he was humiliated and he was spat on. A man who never did any wrong because he, he, he went through what he went through. It means that today our sins can be forgiven. Romans chapter 3 says, says it this way. It says that everyone has sinned. Who's everyone? All of us. Are you included in everyone? Okay, I'm included in everyone. Everyone is everyone. It says that everyone has sinned. We all fall short of God's glorious standard. Yet God, in his grace, freely makes us right in his sight. And he did this through Christ when he freed us from the penalty of our sins. That was was what happened on Friday. That we are free from the penalty of our sin. Now, what is sin? Sin simply means to miss the mark. How many of you guys have ever missed the mark? Okay, that word sin is, is, is used sometimes in an archery context. It means to, to miss the target. It means to, to miss the bullseye. And I don't know about you, but I've, I've missed the bullseye in my life. And as an archer, I understand missing the mark. Not, not very often, but occasionally, I understand missing missing the mark. And they tell you, they tell you to aim small and miss small. If you have a small target, you're more likely to be around that target. If you have a big target, who knows where it's going to go. I remember one year we were getting ready for, for hunting season, and, and one of the benefits of living out in Elkhorn is I can shoot my bow in my backyard. Not that I couldn't do that in Millard, but I think some of my neighbors might have looked differently had I done it in Millard. But, but we were out in Elkhorn, and so, so my dad called me and said, hey, can we can we shoot our bows just to make sure everything's good, make sure everything's ready for, for this coming season? I said, ah, yeah, come on over. So he came over. We, we got our targets, set up our targets, and, and put them in front of the shed. We stepped it off. I'm not going to tell you how far we stepped off, but we stepped it off. And we get to the point where we start, start shooting. And the target's out there, and, and I remember Dad, he lets his first arrow go. And we heard this loud Bang! which is typically not the sound you hear when an arrow hits the target. It's a soft foam target. It's usually this 
deep thud, but we heard this loud bang. And I'm standing behind him. I'm looking at the target. I can't see anything. I don't know where he hit. And then I look above the target. And there sticking out of my shed door was an arrow. He looked at me and said, where did it go? I said, just a bit high. <laughs> and he didn't just miss, he didn't just miss the mark. He missed the target altogether. Listen, there are times in my life where I've missed the mark. There are times in my life where I've missed the whole target altogether. Like, what were you aiming for? I don't know. Can anybody relate to that? The good news is this. It doesn't matter how many times in your life you've missed the mark. It doesn't matter how bad you've missed the whole target altogether. Because of the price that Jesus paid, our sins can be forgiven. And we, we are thankful for Friday. We are thankful for the crucifixion. But it doesn't end there because Sunday came. The women went to the tomb, and as we read, the, the stone was rolled away, and the men appeared and said, why are you looking for the living among the dead? Don't you know he's not here? He told you that he would rise again. He's, he's alive this morning. Church, I'm here to tell you he's alive this morning. And yes, we're thankful for Friday because of Friday, our sins can be forgiven, but because of Sunday, it means that our future is secure. It means that our future it's the cure. Look at 1 Peter chapter 1. This is what the Bible says. It says, praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. And in his great mercy, he has given us new birth into a living hope. The living hope that we're singing about this morning. How? Through the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Through the resurrection of Jesus Christ. See, we, we come to church, and if you've been around church for any period of time, you've, you've heard it said, we teach our kids when they're young that, that Jesus died for our sins, right? How many of you guys taught that to your kids when they were little? Jesus died for, for our sins, and, and each and every one of us do that. We, we learn that from a very early age, Jesus died for our sins. And yes, Jesus did die to, to take away our sins, but, but why do we end it there? Why don't we say Jesus, Jesus died for our sins, but he lives so that we can live? Jesus died for our sins, but he rose again so that we could have new life in him. Why don't, why don't we take it further? Why do we leave it on Friday when Sunday is so incredible? Because he lives, we can live. And, and we're thankful for Friday because it means that our past is clean. It, it means that we're free from the weight of our past, that, that I'm no longer a slave to that sin. It means that, that I don't have to pay the debt that I owe. But because Sunday happened and because he rose again, I'm now given access to this new life. I'm now given access to hope and I'm given access to joy. And I'm given access to love. And I'm given access to all the things that I always needed, even though I never no, I needed them. That's the great thing about Sunday. Why is Easter so important? Easter is so important because he got up, we can get up. Because he had new life, we have new life. Because he rose with victory, we can rise with victory every morning. We are more than conquerors, not through us, but through Christ who strengthens us. It's not anything that I do, and it's not anything that you do, but it's all about what he's already done. He's already paid the price, and we, 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 we we're thankful for Friday. We're thankful for Sunday. Now, if you've, ever, if you've ever set up a domino chain like this, you understand that there are, there are two things that you will kill somebody over. The first one is if somebody comes and bumps the table, right? Right? If you see somebody doing this or you see somebody setting up a house of cards and you come and you go, you are likely to get cut. I'm just going to tell you. <laughs> there are two things that will aggravate you more than it. somebody coming and knocking over or even worse, you line them all up. Sometimes they go from the kitchen through the living room over to the stairs. You run back to the beginning and you tap it. 
You follow the train as it goes throughout the whole house only to get to the end and one of them doesn't fall over. It's nothing more heartbreaking than to go through all of the work of setting it up only to miss out on what could have been. And as we think about the life that Jesus lived, in a very simple way. But as we think about everything that he's done throughout history, i got to be careful not to bump my own table, leading, leading up to this point, what we have to understand is that, that everything that's been done to this point, he's had control over. When he came, how he was born, the life that he lived, the miracles that he did, going to the cross, he chose that. He, cho- he, he, he didn't have to do it. He could have backed out. There was a moment in the garden where he was talking to his dad. He was praying to the father. He said, Father, please don't make me have to do this. Father, if there's any way we can, we can figure out another plan, we can, we can get this train going in a different direction. And the Father says, no. And he chose, he humbled himself in obedience to the Father. He rose again. He walked with his disciples. He appeared to them for 40 days. He, he ascends into heaven. He sends the Holy Spirit. The disciples then, empowered by the Holy Spirit, go as witnesses, spreading the good news about Jesus throughout the known world. And for centuries, that has continued until here we are, we find ourselves today. Now, every, every domino, every event, every, everything to this point, God has, has had control over. Jesus has chosen. He's, he's been able to accomplish. But the last domino at the end of the line, he can't make fall down. The last domino at the end of the line is not his to control. Do you know who has control over that domino? It's you and it's me. Because the truth of the matter is that even though Jesus did all of that for us, we still have to choose. You and I, each and every one of us, have a choice to make. And and the good news about Friday and the good news about Sunday and the good news about who Jesus is and what he's done and what he's doing and what he's going to do, it's potentially the best news that you could ever hear. And I say potentially because it only depends on what you choose to do with it. We all have a choice to make. John chapter 1 says, says this. It says that Jesus came to the very world that he created, but the world didn't recognize him. He came to his own people, and even they rejected him. But to all who believed him and accepted him, he gave the right to become children of God. See, throughout history, God has been knocking over dominoes, leading us to this moment. The reason Jesus did everything that he did was to be in relationship with you. The reason why he created everything, the reason why God said, let there be light and there was light, was to one day give you the opportunity to choose him. This morning, God has caused all of these dominoes to fall, and the only question is, what are you going to do with yours? Are you going to leave it standing or are you going to let it tip over? Are you going to leave it standing or are you going to choose life? Are you going to leave it standing or are you going to choose joy? Are you going to choose hope? What are you going to do with the good news of Easter today? Stand with me this morning. Before we close, I want to to give you the opportunity to respond to God's word today. Because even as we read, the Bible says that we've all sinned, we've all missed the mark, we've all fallen short. Not one of us is perfect. But yet it also tells us that, that to all who, who accept him, to all who believe in him, the Bible says that, that anyone who calls upon the name of the Lord will be saved. This morning, all we have to do is confess with our mouth and believe in our hearts that that he is Lord and that God raised him from the dead. That today we're not not celebrating a a tomb that's full, but we're celebrating a tomb that is empty that he got up on that morning. 
this morning, if you're here and you say, Pastor John, I don't want to leave my domino standing. Pastor John, I want to choose life. I want to choose joy. I want to choose Jesus today. With every head bowed and every eye closed, nobody's looking around. If that's you, I just want to pray for you really quick. I'm not going to embarrass you. I'm not going to call you forward. I'm not going to make you do I'm going to pray with you right where you're at, but, but I want to know who I'm praying with. And so if that's you, nobody's looking around, would you do me a favor? Just be, be courageous enough, be bold enough to, to slip up a hand right where you're at. Thank you, sir. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, sir. Thank you, ma'am. Anybody else? Anybody else? Put it up. Put it right back down. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, sir. This morning, here's what we're going to do. We're going to say a quick prayer, and there's nothing magical in this prayer, but as we call upon God, the Bible says that we are saved, that we are made new, that he's, he's given us new birth into that living hope. And so just repeat this prayer with me. Just say, Jesus, thank you so much. Thank you for Friday. Thank you for Sunday. Thank you for the new life I have in you today. Today I choose you. I choose joy. I choose hope. I choose life. Come into my heart. Change me from the inside out. Lead me on your path from this day forward, all the days for the rest of my life. Thank you for welcoming me into your family. In Jesus' name, let me pray for you this morning. God, I thank you for those that prayed that prayer. God, I thank you for those that, that rose their hand and those that didn't, but they, they still prayed it and they meant it from their heart. The, the Bible says that there are angels rejoicing in heaven because of the decision that was made today. And we rejoice with them. God, we thank you for the crucifixion. We thank you that our sins are forgiven. God, we thank you for, for Sunday. We thank you that because you live, we can live and that our future is secure. And God, I thank you that today, today we choose you. God, you chose us and we choose you. Be with us this day in Jesus' name. And everybody said amen. Amen. God bless you this morning. Be dismissed in the love of the Lord. We'll see you guys next week. New series, six words to change your life.